Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you are watching from. It is so good to see you um, this morning. My name is Ethan um, and I'm part of the Manchester campus and also part of the amazing, outstanding, audacious youth team. Shout out to the West Region. Um, but it's great to be with you this morning. It's my honour to bring you a devotion. Um, so I hope you've got your Bibles out, you have got your tea, coffee or maybe... If you're feeling a bit risky this morning, you've gone for a cold glass of water to wake you up. Um, but we are going to flick to Matthew 14. Um, so get ready to meet me there. Um, and today, to give you a minute, we are going to be looking at um, Jesus walking on water. We are going to be focusing from verse 25. Um, and to give you a bit of context, um, Jesus has just fed the 5,000, okay? So he's been with the disciples, he's just fed the 5,000, and he's decided he wants to seek some time with God by himself. So he's gone up a mountain and he's sent the disciples ahead um, onto the lake on a boat. Now, due to it being a bit stormy, the disciples have gone pretty far. Jesus has come down from the mountain and has decided um, that he wants to go and meet the disciples. So instead of getting the tram, instead of getting the train, instead of, you know, even getting one of the new electric scooters in town, he's decided fastest mode of transport is I'm going to walk on the water, which is a bold decision. I wish I could do that as well, but sadly, I can't. So, verse 25. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell them, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? You see, I don't know about you, but over, over coming out of lockdown, people had some crazy hair. Okay. In lockdown, everyone's hair grew out. Mine looked like an afro. Um, some of you girls would have, you know, had all your split ends or whatever that really means. Um, but then everyone's had the haircut. See, barbers have opened, salons have reopened, and everyone's got their new trims. Um, they've gone a little short and maybe they've changed colour. Maybe if you're feeling risky, you've added in a fringe. Or if you're really cool, you've added a respectable amount of facial hair. Um... But the problem is I don't recognise a lot of people. I see them at church or at work and I'm like, are you the same person? And this is really what's happened in this passage. The disciples have seen a figure on the water and they're like, is that a ghost? But really, it's Jesus, the person who they've been with for the past few days. And actually, um, because of the change of circumstance, because of the environment and the storm that they're currently in, they're struggling to see Jesus. And I think sometimes, if we're being honest, this can happen in our own lives. The circumstance in our lives get a grip of our perspective and we actually struggle to see where Jesus is moving in our current situation. However, we know that we serve a God who is moving and loves us and works throughout our lives. So I actually encourage you today, if that is how you feel, you can't see where Jesus is moving in your situation. I actually encourage to just search for him today. Whether it's a conversation that's opened up at work with a colleague, maybe it's a door that's opened up, an opportunity. Actually, that is Jesus moving, that he's maybe um, prompted you to talk to someone um, and actually see what opportunities have arisen um, and try and find where God is moving throughout your current situations if you haven't recognised him there yet. So that is what we see um, from verse uh, 25 and 26. Um, but I want to just quickly dive into, that's a little reference to the water, um, dive into verse 30. Um, Jesus called out to, uh, sorry, Peter called out to Jesus and said, Jesus, if that is you, tell me to come to you. Now, how bold is that? All the other disciples have sat in the boat, but Peter has, 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 has kind of chimed up and said, do you know what? I'm going to ask Jesus, is this you? Um, so Peter is called and he started to walk out to the water. Now, Peter is focused. He's locked in on Jesus. Now, imagine you're in the situation. You're one of the disciples in the boat, right? There's a storm brewing. Now, some of them are fishermen, okay? So some of them are probably thinking, I've done this. I've journeyed a storm. I actually know what I'm doing. Some of them are probably panicking. Now, a quick little extra thought for you today. If you're maybe one of the fishermen in that situation and you are currently in a circumstance in life, which you're like, actually, do you know what? It may be a little hard, but I've done this before. I can do it. Why don't you try inviting God into that situation? Why don't you try saying, Jesus, 
can you just come and help me in this situation? Even though I could probably do it, I might be scraping the barrel. But why don't you just come and help me? Because I probably need a little bit of help. That may really unlock something, a new revelation in that environment, in that circumstance. So just as a quick little extra thought, if you're actually smashing something at the moment, you're doing really well at it, um, why don't you invite Jesus in? Because we are called to live life with God. Um, he created us to live with him. Um, so if you're currently doing something really well, why don't you just invite Jesus into that and see how that changes as a little extra thought. But back to imagining you're in the boat. You're in the boat. Um, and you are going to be locked in on Jesus. You see a figure walking on water. He's talking to you. You are Your eyes are peeled. You're not going to blink. You don't want to miss a thing. But Peter calls out and he walks. And Peter is locked in on Jesus. But then what happens? He loses focus on Jesus. He gets distracted by the winds. And he's actually just overcome with fear. Now my encouragement for you today. And my challenge for you. Is don't lose focus on Jesus. You are called to love God and to love people. That is what the Bible teaches us. Regardless of what your week, your month, your year has looked like and is currently looking like, uh, there is always opportunities to do these two things. Now, whether this is praying in the morning and recognising God, or whether this is having a conversation with someone, just telling them how great they look today, or maybe they've done a great job at work. Actually, let's try not to get caught up in the busyness of life that we forget to do these things and lose focus on Jesus. So how to do that? At the start of your day today, why not just take a moment to pray and recognise God right at the very beginning. Say, God, I recognise you in this moment. God, I pray that today, um, actually, I won't lose focus on you and I will get opportunity to love people and love God. I hope that is going to help you and encourage you today to not lose focus on Jesus, to not lose focus on loving him and loving people and to recognise God right at the very beginning. Where is he working in your life? Where is he making opportunities? Where is he moving? I'm going to quickly pray for you and then you can get on with your days. Here we go. Dear God, I thank you for this opportunity to share with my audacious family, God. I just pray right now for each and every one of them as they head into their days, as they head into their weeks, God. I just pray for a real encounter with you in this moment. As they read over this um, chapter, God, I just pray for a real eye-opening word from you, God. Something personal, something encouraging, God. I just pray right now that they will not lose focus on you throughout their days. Um, and actually, they can recognise everything that you're currently doing throughout their lives. God, we love you. And we thank you for everything that has come and that is to come. Amen. I'm so excited to see you this Sunday in church or maybe you'll join us online. I will see you in the chat. What an amazing time it's been with you. Thanks for having me. See ya.